The topic for this morning is living with Swami Kriyananda. Everyone here knows who Swami Kriyananda is. Do you know, Jyoti? Yeah, okay, very good. The very definition of a saint is of one who is always in a state of superconsciousness. And that was true, that was exactly the same for Swami Kriyananda. But what for him was such an easy and natural state, for so many of us, it was a great effort, even trying to match him at that level. Truly, it was a daily constant effort. For Swami Kriyananda, every day was new. He never carried from the previous day anything from the previous day to the next. Every day was fresh, every day was new. In 2005, while Swami Kriyananda moved to India in his 80th birthday, he was gifted a book who was published by Ananda in America. And it was a coffee table book called Space, Light and Harmony. It was this book. And in this book is about, you know, um, the story of Crystal Hermitage, which is uh, Swami Kriyananda's home. And it's a place that he built uh, for people to come and visit and have, you know, be instantly uplifted by the beauty of the gardens, thousands of colorful flowers, the pathways, the pool, the chapel, that he built. It's an exquisite place. <coughs> so in his birthday, at this time, he was in Gurgaon, and he was celebrating it with many Indian devotees. So in that satsang, Swamiji was with this book, just, you know, going through the book, sharing with the Indian devotees about his house, how he felt inspiration from, showing the pictures, talk, talking about it. And you could see that Swamiji was reminiscing. Reminiscing? Remini reminiscing? Yeah. <laughs> about that time when he built this place. And at some point, someone asked him, Swamiji, an Indian devotee, Swamiji from all the houses you have lived, from all the places you have visited, from all the people you have met, what is the most memorable moment of your life? Swamiji, without even pause to think about it, replied, now, That was his answer. For many of us, if we were to be asked, what is the most important moment of your life? We have a tendency to associate that memory with our past, with something that have already, has already gone. Perhaps nowadays we are going through some tough periods and if we were asked, what is the most important moment of your life? Will you able to say with such conviction, now? Because Swamiji lived always in the eternal now. He lived every moment fully. I remember in one occasion while we were traveling from America to India. 
and since, since my brother lives in Paris, so we thought might as well on our way back from America to India, let's stop for a few days in Paris to break the journey and make it easier for Swamiji's body. So we decided to stop in Paris for a few days. We landed in Paris around 8.30 in the morning after 11 hours flight. I hardly slept anything in the plane. I was exhausted. And now in addition with the time difference, we were nine hours ahead of time. So I couldn't wait to go to my brother's apartment to collapse, to have a nap, and just to fully like even and put myself together. So when we go to the apartment, my sister-in-law, I think she saw my face, but anyway, my sister-in-law saw me, then saw Swamiji, and she told him, Swamiji, you must be so tired and so jet lagged. I'm sure it's going to take you just a little time until you get used to the time difference. And surprisingly, Swamiji's reply was, not at all. Wherever I am, I am. That was such a drastic situation for me to even perceive. On one hand, here I was, a young woman in my 30s, completely exhausted, with my mind trying to figure out where I was. And then on the other hand, Swamiji in his 80s, completely awake, ready, and in the present. It created a huge impact in my mind. So many of us are influenced constantly by the consciousness of time and space. But for him, he lives so completely in the present moment that those things didn't hold any influence over him. And it was exactly the same with his health, with his body, or outer circumstances, or what other people thought about him. He used to say, live always at the point between the eyebrows. Try to live, try to project, try to relate to the world from the point between the eyebrows. Live at this center. And that's the way how Swamiji related to each one of us. Once he told me, you know, many people keep telling me that you are a very nice, young looking woman. And yeah, it's okay, I can see you are not that ugly. <laughs> He said, but I can never see you in that way. I can't relate to you at that level. I only recognize you as a state of consciousness. And that's how Swamiji related and saw each one of us. The kind of state of consciousness that we were that we are. And that's exactly how each saint sees us. That's exactly how God sees us. Beyond form, beyond personality. And that the state of consciousness didn't keep Swamiji aloof or separated from us. In fact, it allowed him to get to know us more fully and therefore helps us, 
helped us better. I remember Swamiji met someone to whom he felt that that person had a great spiritual potential, huge. Swamiji instantly gave him a lot of his time and personal energy. I mean, you could see Swamiji pouring tons of his energy to this new person. And this person got suddenly very involved in Ananda. And one evening, Swamiji said to me, you know, this person is going to leave us very soon. His old karma is going to catch up with him and he's going to be pulled away. If I'm not around, please promise me that when he returns, you will help him. For me, it was unthinkable that that person could leave. I mean, he was so involved. He was so in tune with Swamiji. He, he was becoming so much in the heart of everything that was happening in Ananda. But as Swamiji predicted, soon after, that person left. Just very recently, a year and a half ago, that person has returned to Ananda around nine years ago when Swamiji mentioned that. And that person has resumed the path from where he left it. The things that Swamiji put into motion went beyond his lifetime. The way in which he's, help is, he's helping us now goes beyond his body, his physical presence. Even now, he's looking out for each one of us, using each other to help one another. And let me tell you something, that Swami Kriyananda is as much alive now as he was when he was in the body. You have no idea how strongly we can feel his presence here in this center, through your eyes, through your smiles. I mean, we, we can really feel him so vividly. So there are no more excuses for those people who think, oh, I wish I could have met him. I wish I could have, you know, spoken to him. I wish I could have been more open to what he had to give to me. The secret right now is only one, is to bring our energy at this point, at the point between the eyebrows, because that's where Master talks to us, that's where Swamiji can communicate with each one of us without exception. So open your heart fully to him because he is eager to give you what he has received in himself. He said, I only have two desires in life to find God and to help others to find Him. And that desire is still very alive from wherever He is. He's still helping each one of us 
to bring us closer to God, to Master, and to our highest self. So let's just close our eyes for a moment. You can even open your eyes and see this beautiful picture that we have of Swamiji, especially see his smile, his eyes, and try to visualize him at the point between the eyebrows. And just make a small prayer of gratitude or ask for guidance or offer something of yourself to him and thank him for this wonderful center where we all can come together as a true spiritual family on earth. Home. Oh.